Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Welcome to the Gamey Daddy channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. So today I have a discussion video and trying to explore why agents are returning to the Division 2. Um, and what I've noticed is pretty much a slight uptick in the number of agents that are playing the game. Uh, one of the ways that you can just basically find out in your own personal side of things is just looking at your friends list. Now, again, many people's friends lists may not be as big as my friends list because, <laughs> you know, having to meet a lot of people over the years and playing both games, there are a lot of division agents on my friends list. So it could be a little skewed that way. But what I do notice, though, is there are seasons and times where player, uh, you know, player, I would say participation or appearance online based on my friends list will also, you know, decline little by little. And I remember even right before Outriders was released, there was a lot of talk about, you know, how a lot of the, the player base for the division was going to actually go down because of Outriders. But what was surprising to me was I didn't see that uh, that downward trend that a lot of people said. In fact, I was still logging into the division, playing my weekly legendaries, um, you know, farming, you know, playing different kinds of missions and activities that I wanted to play. And I still continue to see a lot of agents uh, that were still playing the game. In fact, many division agents did not even play Outriders. I think because the demo was available, they were able to kind of make their judgment and say, well, this is probably not a game for me. I'll probably just go play anything else. I'm not saying they didn't play Outriders and played the division instead. I'm just saying they just didn't play Outriders. So don't get me uh, wrong on that uh, notion. I'm just trying to point out what I saw from people responding in the comment section and all of that stuff. But again, you know, I think what has happened right now, even with Outriders, is its gameplay loop is largely over. So for the grindy players, for those who are uh, very well adept at playing these games and running the missions and farming and getting all the gear that they need, Outriders gameplay loop is over for many of them. And one of the reasons that I say that is because because of the way the demo was set up and because of the way everything was uh, put in place, People were able to farm and get the things that they needed um, at the time that the demo was out. Many people were able to get a lot of the, the legendaries or, um, well, we call them exotic stuff here in Division. So basically the best tier items. And, you know, those best tier items, I don't think had the variation levels of best tier items like we have in the Division. And so that gameplay loop uh, naturally was designed to expire. And this was actually the intent of the developers. They didn't want people sitting around saying, oh, where's new content? They didn't want people having those expectations because I guess they've learned from Destiny and The Division that if you're going to create a live service game, you better have a lot of the, I would say, the strength and a lot of the manpower and resources to be able to constantly and continue to drop content for your community of players. And again, if you even kind of think about it, it wasn't even sold for half the price. It was sold for the full price at $60. And the gameplay loop was, is already over. And I'm recording this video on the 29th of April. So within a month and say add, maybe if you wanted to throw February in there, uh, you know, and say, okay, let's just throw February, March, and April. Or now let's just go with March because the demo came out at the end of February. So if you want to throw in March and April, two months with the demo and with the full game, it doesn't seem to have that constant loop like, say, Destiny 2 has and doesn't have the constant loop or open ended loop like the Division 2 has. So in my estimation, this is a good thing. And I say that because we are not going to see a lot of, uh, you know, videos that are angry rants about Outriders because Outriders has fulfilled what it let what it actually said it was going to fulfill, which is bringing you a closed loop content that wasn't designed to be a live service game. And so that's pretty much what it is. But here, in my opinion, is what I think is kind of what Outriders did in a, in a, I would say, genius level way was to market the game along the lines of seemingly looking like and feeling like and having a lot of the feels that a game which could be a game that's a lifesavers game with an open ended loop would would be. So you have this semi quasi cover based shooter, you have a bunch of bad guys and you have a bunch of these activities and missions where you deal with hordes and hordes of uh, enemy types that are native to different places. I mean, you see this in Destiny, you see this in a division which has its own factions. Um, you know, you see it in both games, but then in Destiny and Division 2, there is gear that's very challenging to get, which in which then extends that gameplay loop of 
you trying to farm items extends the gameplay loop of you trying to farm uh you know i would say better gear better um you know uh, better setups better builds or better uh, resources these are the things that keep these two games going and outriders carefully and in a smart way sidestep them and so i think when you kind of want to answer the question how does this affect the division's own player base well, the truth is it didn't even really do anything. It did not put a dent, nor was it significant enough for the Division's player base to actually be affected. And the reason is because the Division and Destiny are open loop games, which is something that, you know, is very interesting because at any rate, at any point, Destiny uh, or Destiny 2, to be more specific, uh, can announce another DLC that's $40, $50 or another season. And players and agents will go back and pay that seasonal cost and engage in that season. The Division 3, on the other hand, uh, or sorry, the Division 2, we may get an announcement for new content that could be free or maybe paid. And agents who are interested can go in and also engage in that content piece as well. Outriders, on the other hand, is not intending to do that. So that's pretty much where the game is. So when you kind of think about all of this, when you kind of add it together, I think it makes a lot of sense to see that a lot of division agents who may have been playing Outriders have probably ex exhausted its loop and are now returning back. And a lot of players who did not necessarily bother playing are either just remaining in the division game or maybe playing other games. And I think this kind of makes a lot of sense. So it would also now it will also depend as well on the platform that you're on. So let me also kind of add this nuance to this video because I know somebody will probably mention something. I've also seen a lot of comments from the Xbox community saying, you know, it's hard to find people right now in the division to play. And I think Outriders may be playing a factor into that because compared to, say, the PlayStation platform and the PC platform, those who purchased Outriders, you know, in on PC and on the PlayStation platform had to pay the huge $60 free. If you look at, say, maybe uh, Xbox, Xbox has Game Pass, which, you know, gave you a value deal where you didn't have to pay the full price or the full cost. And so, you know, you were able to kind of get Outriders in quotes for $10 or for free, depending on what package you went with. And so if you want to kind of say, oh, well, you know, why, why are Xbox players not playing the game? I think, you know, that's probably one of the reasons. The cost of entry for Outriders was quite low. In the case of PC and in the case of PlayStation, it wasn't necessarily a small fee. It was actually a very hefty $60 price tag. And so if you see a discrepancy in, say, the Xbox numbers of division players because of the fact that they're playing Outriders, then that is one major explanation, if not a significant explanation as to why we're seeing these particular trends. But nonetheless, I think the division is still holding, you know, its own player base. It's holding the interest of those who are playing the game. Yes, some of us are playing minimally. I think if you were to add my playtime every week, it would amount to about three or four hours a week, which is fine for but for a game that has no content. I mean, all I'm just doing is just fine tuning my other characters, uh, looking at how to level up second characters on accounts. I have three accounts, by the way. Uh, I've seen a lot of people tell me that my levels are low. My shade level is low, but uh, you would do yourself well to pay attention to the different shade levels that I have at different points in my recording of these videos. Uh, they vary all over the place because they're spread out among multiple characters. And so that's pretty much, you know, what I wanted to discuss in this video and point out as maybe a potential reason why you're seeing players return or players remain or in some cases players, uh, you know, player numbers actually trend low. But I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section. If you're still grinding Outriders or if it's a game that still kept you away from the Division, let me know in the comment section. And if you're back to the Division and you're still playing the loop, regardless of whether you're jumping in for 10, 20 hours a week or for just one or two hours a week, let me know as well in the comment section. I think uh, this is going to be fruitful for the conversation overall. I'll talk to you guys in another video. Thank you so much for your time and audience. Hopefully we'll talk soon. Peace out.